Good morning, church family. It's so very good to be together with you again today. I'm very excited today because I have a very, very precious story to share with you. This is one of the most precious Bible stories to me because it has really allowed me to understand God's love in a unique and special way. And I really hope that it's going to be a special story for you too, and that you can explore God's unique love for you. Because you know, your life is different from mine. And so God's love for you is unique and special. So let's explore our story today. The story is called The Prodigal Son, and it's found in the book of Luke chapter 15. Right after our story, I'm going to show you a little uh, craft and sort of science experiment having to do with this paper cross. It's going to help us explore our story a little bit more. So. If you're looking for how to make one of these, you can go to our church website, which is cpckidschurch.com, and you can download one of these there for yourself. Let's listen to our story and make a little something, and then I'll meet you back here. Jesus taught his friends about many things. Sometimes he taught by telling special stories called parables. By thinking long and hard about these stories, we can learn a little about what God and the kingdom of heaven are like. One day on the side of a hill, he told this story. There was a man who had two sons. The younger son spoke to his father and said, Father, give me my share of your property now. So the father divided his property between his two sons. Then the younger son packed up and left for a faraway country. There he wasted his money on wild living. He spent everything he had. Then the whole country ran low on food, so he didn't have what he needed. The only job he could find was feeding pigs. He became so hungry that he longed to eat the scraps of food left to the pigs. He said, My father's hired servants have more than enough food, but here I am dying from hunger. I will get up and go back to my father. I will say to him, Father, I am a sinner and no longer fit to be called your son, but perhaps you will treat me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father. While the son was still a long way off, his father saw him. He was filled with tender love for his son and ran to him. He threw his arms around him and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you, and I am no longer fit to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick! Bring the best clothing and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Let's have a feast and celebrate. It's as though my son was dead and now he is alive again. He was lost and now he is found. The older son was out in the field. When he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. When he learned that his father was celebrating because his brother had returned, he became angry and refused to go in. So his father went out and begged him to join the party. But the older son said, Look, all these years I've worked myself to the bone for you and have always obeyed you. And you have never given me anything. But this son of yours wasted your money and did terrible things. Now he comes home and you give him a dinner party? My son, the father said, You are always with me. Everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad. This brother of yours was dead and now he is alive again. He was lost and now he is found. Jesus went on to teach many other things. This cross reminds me that God demonstrated his own love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. I'm going to fold the short arms up and twist one side to the left. Then I'm going to tape the two pieces together. It also reminds me of how the father threw his arms around his son. Now I'm going to gather the long arms. This time I'm going to twist one side to the right. Be sure to tape them securely. See, this reminds me of two people hugging each other. 
Now, sometimes we think that bad things or sad things can separate us from God. And I'm going to cut this cross on the dotted line here and try to separate it. Just cut right along the dotted lines on both sides. But nothing can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. Maybe you can make some hearts like this today for someone you love. Were you amazed by how that worked? I hope that this story will become a story where you can discover that God has loved you with an everlasting love, that you don't need to make great speeches or do amazing deeds, but only to allow yourself to be a beloved child of God. Let's pray together. Dear God, we thank you so much for your unconditional, never stopping, never giving up love for us. Help us to allow ourselves to be and to be beloved. We pray these things in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Well, church family, I hope that you're going to continue to explore this story and to learn and to grow through what this special, very special story has to teach us. I hope you have a great week and I will see you again soon.